Opening up today, something new. We were showing a clip of Great White Intersection, which recently premiered on the Discovery Plus channel. And we are lucky to have one of the co-creators uh, of Great White Intersection, Mr. Marty Hoffman. Welcome to the show, Marty. Hey, Ian. Grateful to be here, buddy. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, rock and roll. We're going to be uh, talking a lot about this Great White Intersection, a labor of love that you started three years ago. Can you tell us you know, a little bit about the origin story and, and how you, you guys came up with this idea? Absolutely. Definitely a labor of love. You know, like you mentioned, we first started filming in October of 2019. Uh, we had no, no backing. Uh, you know, really, it, it, it was kind of uh, the, the idea was spawned from one of my co-creators, Jeff Such. He's an Emmy award winning cinematographer, kind of my mentor when I was living back in New York doing uh, film and TV work. But he had been going to Cape Cod every month for 25 years or so with his family, just renting a house. So he he really got to know the, the water community, the surf community over there. Um, and one of the main focuses of the film is, you know, the sh fatal shark attack of Arthur Medici in 2018, September. And, uh, you know, after that happened, a lot of Jeff's friends and people that, you know, use the water every day, you know, it was, it was a big concern. Uh, it was a very tragic attack. Um, and just the overall increase in population of the great white sharks off the coast had been freaking a bunch of people out as you would imagine. And uh, they initially asked Jeff if he would do like a public service announcement to kind of get the community to know, you know, hey, don't don't go in the water at night or in early morning, this and that. Um, and so we, you know, we, we went out there, we, we recorded a, a town hall meeting um, and we, you know, interviewed a few people and started to realize like, hey, I think this is more than just a PSA. I think we should really consider doing a, a full, full feature documentary or a series around it. Um, and fast forward three years, we ended up interviewing 26 people, uh, about 40 days of shooting out, getting B-roll, uh, you know, maybe 15 days or more on the water itself. And uh, luckily, you know, we, we pitched, we ended up, you know, getting a, a little sizzle reel kind of teaser. We pitched it to Netflix, Apple Plus, Nat Geo and Discovery. And, you know, Discovery, they wanted it. So it ended up uh, kicking off the Shark Week 2022 on their streaming platform. That's so awesome. Yeah, congratulations on that. Thank you. So filming over water, in water, that's one of the most difficult things in entertainment. Can you tell us a little bit about you know, some of the difficulties and just maybe just some of the surprises that you had uh, during, during that set? Yeah, I mean, you know, I'm, specifically with drones, you know, you've already got a high level of risk constantly. Um, you know, just innately drones are just can be very scary. Uh, but you add, you know, four foot seas, uh, you know, very quick moving currents, um, you know, a boat driver, uh, a spotter plane in the air, you know, sharks in the water. And yeah, it can get, you know, it, it kind of compounds those risks and that overall just tension a lot more, uh, you know, and I don't mind being honest about my faults. You know, we did lose an I2 X7 that is currently in the bottom of the Atlantic uh, on our first day of trying to go get white shark footage. And it was just devastating. But, uh, you know, lessons learned. We, we, you know, we dusted off our shoulders and we got back to it and ended up getting just, you know, some incredible footage. I think we got some footage that I don't think really has ever been seen of great whites, uh, you know, in very shallow waters, you know, just feet off of the off the beach. But, uh, but overall, I mean, yeah, you really have to be on your A game. Uh, you know, you need, you know, typically, you know, with any type of serious drone operations, you need to be taking your time, thinking about every movement you're going to do and making sure that everyone around you is, you know, on the same page. Like you cannot do stuff on the impulse. You know, that's what we have. That's what happened when we lost the I-2. You, you know, there, there was a shark right there and we just were like, go, go, go. And 
and yeah, it, it bounced into the water and I almost dove to get it. But yeah. uh, the captain said, no, don't. There's a shark right there. So, but anyways, yeah, it's, it's complex to say the least. And it's, it's really a roll of the dice. You, you guys came up with this idea three years ago. You know, it's your money, right? You're producing this, you're coming up, and then you have to shop it to network. And so not knowing, you know, like, like what you just mentioned, you did have some footage that's never been seen before. I'm sure that helps, right? And, you know, and kudos to Discovery for kind of going, uh, you know, a little bit of a different direction with Shark Week, you know, more of a drama, right? More of a serious yeah. topic that, that uh you know not more people trying to jump on sharks or something so the fact that they went into a, 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 that type of direction is is a, is a great thing i mean shark week has been what's over 20 years it's been oh going. they're coming up on like i think either their 35th or oh, wow. 38th uh anniversary next year um and yeah no we were we were very surprised we kind of thought it maybe had more of a netflix nat geo feel it was very cinematic very dramatic you know we interviewed the aunt of the of Arthur Medici, and it was you know one of the heaviest interviews I'd ever been in. She you know she just let it out, um, but you know Howard Schwartz over at Discovery, he he saw something in it and he took a chance with it, and ultimately uh, you know we they ended up taking it, and you know my my hat is off. You know the third uh, third partner in this was David Roof too. He worked at HBO for eighteen years, uh, head of their creative promotions. And uh, so he really, he knows how to handle the back end, you know, sending off the emails, finding the contacts, uh, you know, that whole side of it, which, you know, me being, uh, you know, I like being out on set, having my hands in the game, playing with my tools and my toys. Um, and he really, he was the one that really brought it home, um, you know, but it takes that kind of combined effort, but it was just three of us for the first three years. And actually we didn't get any shark footage at all until we actually managed to sell it to Discovery. Because what it takes to actually film the sharks, I mean, you first of all, you need to have a boat, right? So you need to have a boat captain and you know, gas prices and whatever, like that's expensive. And then you also, you need a spotter plane. You know, yes, I can, you know, with the population on Cape Cod, you can find sharks in the water, but you're limited to, you know, 400 feet. And the spotter plane's up there at 1,500 feet. He, spotter plane can, you know, he would find it instantly, say, okay, hey, 12 boat lengths to your east. And he would get us in close. Um, and that was crucial. But again, like every day, that's anywhere from three to $4,000 just on gas alone for a plane, spotter plane, boat. So, you know, it was, it was, it, it took a lot to actually make that happen. Yeah. Well, yeah, you don't think about the logistics. And then, is a shark even going to be out there that day? So it's a big, you yeah. Know, you weather plays a big factor too. You know, once there's a little bit of wind on the ocean, your visibility just goes right. If there was rain the day before, there's a little muck in the water, visibility is gone, right? Like everything has to line up. And literally all the footage that we had in the film was from three days of filming. That's all that we really got. And it was actually in early October. Wow. So yeah, it's, it's a challenge, but man, it was, it was fun. And, you know, we, we managed to get some footage. I don't think I've ever seen, uh, you know, of sharks just feet, you know, literally five feet off the shore. Um, you know, we had a one clip that, uh, it ruined surfing for me in Cape Cod, like, uh, basically a great white duck diving under, like he was on the inside of the break. And I saw that from the drone. I'm like, okay, not going to be surfing here anymore. That's unfortunate. So do you, do you see yourself taking more of a tour, uh, towards, um, you know, nature? I mean, yeah, it was about, uh, Mr. Medici, but also, you know, it's the sharks. Um, do you see yourself going more career wise in that direction? Cause you have worked on dancing with the stars recently, Yellowstone, you were nominated for an Emmy, uh, HBO, um, hard knocks. So do you see, see yourself going that direction or do you still like kind of mixing it up? I mean, where, wherever we can get it. Right. I mean, I've been freelance my whole career. I've been, uh, you know, I started in New York in 2005, so I'm coming up on 18 years or so. Uh, I mean, look, the, this project was the first project that was, you know, mine, that was ours, you know, Jeff and David and I, it was ours, you know, my, the whole rest of my career, I've been working on other people's stuff. So, you know, we're, we're in the process of pitching a few more ideas to a few different networks. And ultimately, that's 
that's the big goal, I would say, probably for most guys in, in the film and TV is to be able to, you know, have control over, you know, have creative license to do what you want to do. Uh, you know, and Cape Cod just lends itself to so many opportunities when it comes to environments and nature and animals, because it's just a thriving ecosystem. You know, it's really unique. It's just 40, 40 miles right off the Atlantic and you just get so much different, uh, you know, wildlife overall. Um, but, you know, but at the same time, like, yeah, if, if I get a call to go up to L.A. to go fly a drone around some dancers on Dancing with the Stars, I'll take it, you know, but, right. uh, but we'll see. Are you guys working on uh, in any type of follow-up to Great White Intersection? Yeah, I mean, we're, we're currently one of the guys that was featured in the film, Shark Specialist, guy named Tom Burns. Uh, we really feel like he's kind of like a reality show, you know, in the making. Um, you know, so we're trying to, we're considering developing a, just a show around him. He's, he's just a veterinarian, very successful veterinarian. Um, but he just has been obsessed with sharks for like the last 30 years and all, most of his free time not spent with his family, he's going around the world and, uh, diving with sharks, you know, and some of his photography is insane. Um, you know, but, uh, you know, another thing, another big part of the film that we really didn't get to expand on because it was for shark week, you know, and the story of Cape Cod is, was very complex story. Um, but the gray seals had a lot, you know, the whole reason the sharks are there is because of the gray seals. And we, we had a lot of content around the gray seals and interviews with that. And, you know, to kind of fit it into that feel and form and time for Shark Week, a lot of the gray seal stuff was, was kind of taken out. You know, it's touched on, but it wasn't as expansive as our first few cuts. Um, so we might be following up with a film with that. Um, but yeah, overall... With you know, three S Creative, which is Jeff, David, and I, we're we're kind of sticking in this this realm and seeing if we can get more kind of around Cape Cod sharks and, and nature stuff. Excellent. Any plans on doing anything in Southern California, San Diego, Mexico, perhaps? I would I would love to do something San Diego. I mean, uh, you know, we actually I was all frustrated because you know I'm out on Cape Cod getting footage of great whites, and in San Diego at home. You know, uh, there's great whites all over the place now. Um, and we actually ended up uh, licensing some footage from a guy named Scott Fairchild. Uh, we, I, I saw him, you know, he's every single day on Instagram. He's got some clip of a juvenile great white, like within two feet of a surfer that doesn't even know it. Uh, you know, luckily in San Diego, we haven't had any issues that they're pretty sure because they're juveniles, they're not like on the hunt. Whereas in Cape Cod, it's you know, the seal population is out of control and they're getting ready to go south. So they are hungry. They're there to get seal. Um, but, you know, I'd, I'd love to do something in San Diego. Um, you know, we, we're, there's talks about doing some stuff in Hawaii, Japan, uh, Australia. You know, really, you know, we're kind of we're throwing as much at the window as we can. And hopefully something sticks with some of the networks. Nice. What, um, <clears throat> What about a drone movie? You think that would ruin uh, ruin the industry doing uh, like a drone documentary on, you know, we met, for those of us that don't know us, which would be probably the majority of people watching, uh, know us both, that Marty and I met uh, after the Paradise Fire up on in Northern California. And then, you know, a lot of the people in our orbit in the inspection side, we, we all kind of came out of, out of that. Uh, the Belden boys, as my wife likes to call us. But would you would you ever see yourself working on? Um, and I know it'd be hard. Utilities typically don't want their assets shown. Um, yeah, that would honestly. That's the first thing that came to mind uh, is you know just what what can and can't you talk about? Uh, you know, because man, that uh, you know that whole experience of you know up in the up in those forest areas, uh, you know, just beautiful areas and some of the devastation and I mean, there's definitely something there, right? I mean. If anything, you know, there's, you could certainly do a reality show on, you know, the different like drone service providers, like, you know, drone wars or some, something like that, where, you know, all these different providers are bidding for this job and that. And I mean, you know, if you've ever spent any time on a project, you know, doing power line inspection, man, I mean, we could probably do a four hour podcast just talking about stories just on the Northern California project that you and I worked on. You know, I, I pinned a truck up against a rock coming around, like almost slid down a mountain. And, you know, there's a lot of insane stuff that goes on. And, you know, a good show really just, you need 
good characters and you need, you know, human stories really is what it comes down to. Right. Cause it's never about, it's not about the shark. It's not about the drone. It's, it's the relationship. Is there. It's the people, right? Yeah, definitely. That was, and that was something we always tried to stay true to with, with intersection. You know, we didn't want to sensationalize Arthur's death. We didn't want to make it just, you know, Jaws returns kind of situation. Like we wanted to make it a human story that has to do with a fatal shark attack. When it's really, if, if there was going to be a bad guy, uh, maybe I'll get in trouble for saying this, but it was the seals, right? It's return of the seals. Their, their food source is kind of... I mean, I, yeah, it, you know, we, and we can go... Honestly, I would say watch the film because, you know, the, it is like... Just to say it's a complex story, right? Like you, you could almost say the whole problem, the whole reason why the sharks are in such massive, basically why Cape Cod has become like the hotspot for great whites is because of a document that Nixon signed in 1972, the Marine Mammal Protection Act, when he was trying to get the hippie vote, you know, as, as they would say, you know, so essentially any mammals, any fish, well, not fish, but the mammals off the coast, because 40 miles of that coastline on Cape Cod is all national seashore. So those seals have the utmost protection of any animal that you can get. And one of the mistakes they made, because they did that before the Endangered Species Act, is they didn't put any provisions about, well, hey, if the seals come back, then we can remove these restrictions, right? So last, you know, since the 70s, the seals have just been untouched and that environment you know, shallow shoals, you know, they can, they can haul out on the beach. They can jump in the water. It's perfect for breeding, you know, and we've got, you know, some scientists that we talked to in the film that said there's probably like 60 to 80,000 seals hanging out. I mean, and if you, you go to the, any beach in Cape Cod now, there's, you'll see a gray seal guaranteed, um, you know, but, uh, but yeah, I, I digress. I mean, it's again, watch the film. We did our best to squeeze all that info into, you know, about an hour and a half. Uh, but I think you, you, you definitely get a, all, all the different uh, lines in there. Yeah, you guys did an amazing job. I know my kids didn't sleep for a week after watching <laughs> it. You know, they didn't grow up on Jaws, so they didn't have that in their brain. Yeah. But, uh, you yeah. Know, I mean, you know, I'd... especially the underwater footage that, that you captured that, you know, really has never been seen before on film. Yeah, no, we were we were pretty darn excited. And honestly, we, we were surprised, you know, because we... Uh, it audit, well, Tom Burns, you know, the guy I mentioned earlier, a shark specialist, you know, we, we decided, you know, when I first saw how slowly these sharks were just cruising and then, you know, they're 10, 15 feet of water. When I first saw that from the drone in the air, I looked over at Jeff. I said, Hey, Jeff, uh, I think an underwater ROV might work. Like they're not going that fast. And our, our biggest concern with, you know, investing in an underwater drone was, well, they can really only go two to three knots, maybe more, maybe less, a lot of currents. We just didn't think, you know, a shark would, we'd be able to keep up with a shark. Right. And uh, when I saw that, I said, you know, let's go for it. And then Tom Burns was like, oh, the moment you drop that in the water, you spin those props, those sharks are going to take off. And it was total opposite. We... Um, one of the first days we dropped it in the water, we had a great white do like eight circles. It was literally just like, what is this thing? You know, he was very intrigued and we ended up getting some, you know, crazy footage. So, so, um, could, you are a camera expert. I, I would say that what, uh, are there different types of settings when you're filming underwater than, than when you're doing like an aerial shot? Well, you know, one thing I did learn a little bit because I previous to this I hadn't done I hadn't done much underwater uh, videography, photography, or anything. Uh, you know, you definitely, uh, you know, the 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 bands of color that are lost. You know, so I guess every ten meters you go, there's you know a band of 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 light that is lost. So I think the first one is red. So a lot of times, if you're going to be under ten meters, then you need to put like a red magenta filter over it to bring back the red that's being cut out from the water itself. And then if you're in green water, like Cape Cod, you know, you would use a kind of a different fill, more of a magenta, but if you're in blue waters, like the Caribbean, you would use a red one. Um, so little subtle things like that. Um, but you know, for the most part, you know, you just, uh, you just gotta, it's, it's half getting lucky and half like being ready, 
you know, like when, when the shark is there or when that, that animal is there, like you got to be hitting that record button and making sure that everything's dialed in and ready to go, you know, and you, and you can't act hasty or else you have, you know, you have issues. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That's amazing to hear. Um, what, what were some, I mean, you've been in the business now 15 years. Eight, yeah, about 18. 18. I guess, yeah. What are some of your more memorable um, set experiences that you've had? I mean, my my go-to glory days were in the X Games. I did 14 years on the X Games. Uh, you know, four, basically 14 years of being able to go out to Aspen, Colorado, uh, all expenses paid for two weeks to like work, but like enjoy Aspen and, and ride and just be around the action sport community. Um, and that was, you know, that was hands down probably, you know, that's, that's always going to be my, my top, you know, I've, uh, traveled, you know, seven, uh, seven hours down the Amazon into indigenous territory in Brazil, uh, did a film, uh, you know, a film around conservation and, um, global market space. You know, I've done some environmental work and then, you know, I, I guess, Aside from X Games, which was probably the most fun, I think some of the things I'm most proud of, you know, that the Emmy we got for Hard Knocks, it was the Los Angeles Rams Hard Knocks uh, promo. Uh, I Am Football got nominated. And then uh, I think the next year, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers Hard Knocks uh, HBO promo got nominated as well. Um, and then, you know, my last few years in New York, you know, I've I bought into the Free Fly Movi eco space. Uh, right out of the gates in 2013, um, got to know the movie really well. Ended up working on um, America's Got Talent, and very talented Mike uh, Grzynski, uh movie operator, uh, Larry McConkey. Who, if you know anything about the movie industry, Larry McConkey is probably the most legendary steady cam op, at least in my opinion, of, of all time. Uh, but he needed a new movie tech, and uh, my buddy Movie Mike. You know, since he was in L.A., I was in New York and Larry's in New York, New Jersey, put my name forward. And I got to spend about three years, uh, you know, Moby teching for Larry McConkie, which was, you know, incredible. We were uh, a few episodes of Blue Bloods and the Americans. Uh, you know, we, we, we did a shot for um, M. Night Shyamala split. Uh, and that that's probably between the the HBO Hard Knocks and working with Larry. You know, those are definitely uh, up there on my list. Rock and roll. All right. Well, we're excited for you to, you know, join, join the deliverables uh, just to get your, you know, your perspective. You know, I've, I've, all my drone work has been in, in inspections and critical infrastructure and just to hear your, you know, your perspective, because it's still a deliverable, if not harder, right? You go, uh, if, if we go out to shoot a transmission asset and we make a mistake or we lose a card, that transmission asset's still going to be there. You get this one shot on the shark. Right. That's definitely. Yeah. But, but I will tell you, uh, transitioning from cinema world into, uh, you know, utility work inspections, just industrial, having the background knowledge of how photography works, I think was pretty instrumental in, you know, when I did start getting into, you know, inspecting power lines and stuff, I think that really helped push me faster up to the top of some of those pilots because, you know, I understood F-stops in ISO and shutter speed and, uh, you know, was able to kind of come up with ways to really fig, you know, troubleshoot like those early days, right? Because that Northern California after the campfire, those are the early days of doing power line inspections. I think everyone was just, you know, let's go see if we can do it. Um, so, you know, I was, I was pretty proud of how quickly I was able to move up the ranks on that. But it definitely came in, in big handy. And one thing I will always say is, like, if you want to get into the utility side of the work, know your camera just as good, if not better, as you know your drone, right? Because, I mean, you know, nowadays they make the drones obstacle avoidance, all that, which personally I turn off. Right. <laughs> well, yeah, and it's, you know, if you get dependent on how many beers you put in me uh, to start talking about, you know, drone pilots are really aerial photographers. Totally. I've always had... Uh, Yes, we are operating in the national airspace. We, uh, we have to get all of our, our um, licenses and check marks with the FAA. But, you know, e even on the Part 107 test, there's not one camera question no. on it. Uh, absolutely. And so it's like, you know, I, you know, I am a veteran, FAA, and just kind of the beginning of the drones, a lot of military vets 
being involved in, in maybe shaping it early on, but I, you know, obviously safety has to be there, but if, if I, I would like to see a direction of, of more, uh, photography based questions, if not just knowledge, cause great, you know, your clouds or, you know, whatever's on the, on the new recurrent, but yeah. yeah. do you know your F stop? Do you know what, what, what happens if you're getting blown out? You know, how do you, how do you correct that? So, right. And then with every new iteration, of a camera, right? Like when we were using the M210s with the X5Ss, you know, the uh, the latitude of our exposure control was like a normal camera. And then the M300 with the H20T came out and like amazing zoom capabilities, but you, you were limited on like your exposure. So we had to like, you know, I remember, you know, I would have to zoom all the way in, get it to auto expose, lock the auto exposure to pull out to get the, you know, get the cotter pins in the shot, um, you know. And, you know, and the other thing too is you could have five different very capable drone pilots inspecting who do, each one of them is able to get their good quality data using different, you know, techniques, you know. But, uh, but yeah, it's, it's, a, it's an ever evolving uh, industry. And, you know, honestly being, being able to, to, to be a part of deliverables, I, I just like geeking out, really talking tech and, you know, talking with people who are doing the stuff that I like, you know, I always wanted to do LIDAR. I've kind of dabbled in it, but, you know, or, or photogrammetry or whatever it is. I mean, we are we are just still, I think, at the tip of the iceberg when it comes to what drones and how drones are going to be able to just completely change the world. Oh, absolutely. And then even, you know. Two weeks ago, with the the DoD putting DJI on on the national watch list, I mean that's that's going to change the industry. I don't think people are talking about it. I think you got a lot of people. I mean, we all have a lot of money invested in DJI, oh, yeah. right? So that's going away. You're going to have all of these new big projects coming out. 2023, you know, Free Fly and Sky Dio seem to be leading the way uh, in the American side. You but still, yeah, you still have Autel, and you still have you know Parrot, and you know you got skyfish new new companies you know because really it's like you know the american made is is what what we need to have well the whole industry learned on dji so now it's going to be splintering off where you know if you're doing for instance we do sky deal we use it for bridge inspections we use free fly for mapping and overhead so there's not going to be just the one platform as 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 we kind of branch out um, yeah moving forward f-stop still an f-stop ISO, F stop still an F stop. Still ISO. Yeah. You know, absolutely. I don't care how you put slice it or whatever. But well, Marty, I'm excited uh, for you to join us. Thanks for coming on, kind of introducing yourself, letting everybody, um, you know, as 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 just personally, my orbit goes. You know, I'm going out to DC soon, and you know, get you back more into my orbit, and then uh, go from there. And, you know, a lot of knowledge, you've helped a lot of people in the industry, they wouldn't be where they are at um, without working with you. So well, thank you for saying that. I mean, yeah, I, I'm excited. I, I think it'd be interesting because, you know, my background in the cinema world, TV film, your background in, you know, like running pack try and being in on big conversations with you know, big multinational corporations, you know, it's, it's a good little mix. So, you know, hopefully we can get some interesting people here, have some, some great conversation, do our best to keep it positive. Awesome. Well, all right. Well, thanks for coming on, Marty. We are going to close out. The one thing that we are going to keep on the new deliverables is, uh, in the field with Mr. Zach Harpence. Take us home, Zach. Welcome back to field time with Zach right here in the beautiful middle of nowhere, Connecticut, and uh, you'll never guess what this river just asked me. It asked me for my Netflix login. I'm like, what? I guess apparently they love streaming too. It's all for today. <laughs>